We got to talk about this undercard. Joshua Usyk versus Joshua 2. That's supposed to be one of the main themes of the video of this stream. How do you feel about this undercard? I told y'all I got a gut feeling they're going to put this shit on pay-per-view over here. They already announced it's going to be pay-per-view over in the UK, but we already knew that. What is it? Uh, 30 quid? 30 quid? 30 British pounds? How did Anthony Joshua sign with the zone? But then his fight is on Sky Sports. Now, you know, they're supposed to be splitting. Uh, what is it? An 80 million? Is it an 80 million dollar site fee? I forgot the exact number. And then pay-per-view. Basically, you're going to have Alexander Usyk and Joshua both, both bring home. 50 million at least a piece 50 million crazy so that's partly why i feel that it's going to end up on pay-per-view now the saudis have all the rights and with the way the zone has been going i can't help but feel that they're going to try to charge us over here but what will they charge us though it's not confirmed yet that it'll be pay-per-view here in the states but I don't. I wouldn't doubt if they're going to do it. Here's the undercard. Obviously, you're going to have Usyk versus Anthony Joshua. You got Colin Smith. He's at 175 now, taking on Matthew Bardalik. I've seen him fight before, 21 and one. But where? Who have I seen him fight? Maybe I haven't seen him fight. Have I? Probably not. I don't think I have. Well, Colin Smith returned to taking on this cat. Remember, former 168-pound champion, uh, Canelo beat up his arm. This fight I'm really looking forward to. Felix Hergovitz, the both of these guys were supposed to fight earlier this year, but Hergovitz, um, praise to him and his family, he lost his father. 14-0 with 12 KOs. He's been being ducked by the, like the plague um, to be IBF mandatory. He's fighting the Chinaman, Big Bang, Zhe Li Zhang. 24 and 0, 24 0 and 1 with 19 KOs and no. Chinaman, it's old timey, but it's not racist and it's not racially insensitive. I did my research. And you can say Oriental still, you know, but I wouldn't do that. That, that, feels, that feels wrong. Oriental. That just feels, I don't know, I wouldn't do it. But yeah, he's got that big uh, knockout over uh, Scott Anders, uh, Alexander. I covered that fight. That was on the undercard of uh, Canelo versus uh, Bevo. That's what this was supposed to be on, wasn't it? The first time, Canelo versus Bevo. CCP J. Lee. No, that's that's even wrong. That's that's worse. The CCP J. Lee. But yeah, I like that fight. I rate that fight for the undercard. I'm giving that fight a B plus. You can say Chinaman. You can say that. I think you, I'm, unless something changed, you know how with the, in these days, in this day and age, rules is changing and shit. You know, like you can't even be a woman these days. You got to be some little other shit. You got Badu Jack, who's on the card, taking on, you got two former TMT fighters, two former Mayweather Promotions fighters, Badu Jack and Andrew Tabidi fighting on the undercard. This is taking place in Saudi Arabia, by the way. Tabidi, that one loss I covered when he got his ass knocked out in the World Box of Super Series by Uni uh, Dorticos. He was stretched the fuck out like starfish. What the hell is that? Okay. But um, he's fighting a nice, solid fight. against Tyrone Spong. Remember, he was supposed to fight Andrew Ruiz on, on Triller earlier this year. So this is going to be a nice... This is going to be... Oh, Jesus. All these messages coming in. My bad. This is going to be a nice, solid fight. Hold on. Let me turn all this crap off. 14-0 with 13... K that, that Ness... That's Ness. I always say that, though, don't I? Every time I see him, I be like, bro... Did they, the box rec picture, what are they doing? 
Okay. Hold on. Um, you got Ramla Ali. So far, hey, listen. I got two fights here that I'm interested in on the undercard. I don't know. What would you rate this card? You got Tabidi versus Spong. Sprong. Sprong. Spong. Spong. It's no sprung. I always say sprung. A sprong. Hergovitz versus Jay Lee Zhang. And then you got some filler fights with Badu Jack and Colum Smith. Spong was supposed to fight Usyk. I remember that. Was that supposed to be on HBO or was that going to be on The Zone? I don't remember. But I don't know, guys. I'm kind of feeling this joint. I'm kind of liking this card. Who's Bottle Jack fighting? Bottle Jack's at Cruiserweight now, by the way. He's fighting a Richard Rivera. Undefeated, 31 years old. Nobody on the resume of note and frankly, pretty shitty resume. 40 and 28, 11 and 17, 24, 26, 4 and 10, 13 and 30. Yeah, this ain't, this ain't, ain't, this ain't nothing here, you know? So his name is Richard Popeye the Sailor Man Rivera. Hmm. He was supposed to fight Andy on the uh, on, uh, on Triller, but then basically Andy Ruiz tried to, I'm guessing he was having some issues with the date too, with getting the date. And he tried to sneak over to Triller to fight uh, Spong and PBC stopped it. But Badu Jack is competing at Cruiserweight right now. Badu the draw, Jack. I don't know. It was somebody in the comments that gave him that name. But overall, I'm kind of digging this undercard. You know, Rama Ali, Ramla Ali fighting uh, Crystal Nova. 10 and 2 with one KOs. She's from Dominican Republic, 22 years old. Young girl. Oh, no. Maybe I'll go watch some tape. Here's our Rama Ali. I wasn't feeling her at first because she was like, she seemed like she was more into her box, into her modeling than boxing. She said some real off putting shit one time, you know, about like when she got a cut. And I was like, bro, like, you know, like you fucking a boxer. Like she had like a uh, model shoot with like Dior or something like that. And then she got a cut in her fight. And it was like, you know, like, ain't nobody trying to hear that shit. You shouldn't have motherfucking had the Dior after a fight. But I don't know. She grew on me. She's growing on me, definitely. I like her stance and her punch um, her punch variety. But we'll see. You know, she's still working her way up, but she is uh, 32 years old. But in boxing, remember, that's not old. Especially in women's boxing. They can fight till they're fucking 45 years old. But overall, I'm digging the card. Like, you know, I'm, I, I got to admit... Um, by the way, I still have uh, Alexander Usyk beating Anthony Joshua. I don't think he's going to stop AJ, you know, but it's possible. I'm interested in what Rod, Robert Garcia is going to be able to do. You know, um, he's going to have to play the pressure fighter. You know, he can't try to outbox Usyk. That ain't going to work. He's going to get his fucking face jabbed off again. You know, that's not going to work out, you know, for him well. But at the end of the day, we do know that Anthony Joshua has a smart ring IQ because after all, you know, he did um, like he he's adjusted well in fights in which he had trouble. The Dylan White fight, the um, obviously the Vladimir Klitschko fight, lost to Andy Ruiz, came back, beat him. You know, he showed the proper game plan, even though Andy Ruiz was fat and shit. He still, you know, lost 10 pounds, you know, showed boxing ability and moved. But in this case, I think he did the right thing by getting rid of all the yes men in his corner. That personally, I think he did the right thing. You know, but in this fight, he has to play, play the pressure fighter. And, you know, yes, he does have to go to the body. But Usyk is a very smart fighter, too. 
So, of course, he's going to make adjustments and he's probably going to anticipate that he's going to make these changes as well. You know? I still have my doubts, though, that Tyson Fury will fight Usyk if he wins. If Usyk wins. For some reason, it just feels like Tyson Fury don't want no part to him. At all. Also, what's the mandatory situation like? I haven't really covered in a long time. Okay, so Tyson Fury, we don't know what the hell he's going to do. Um, there's some rumors circulating around that Tyson Fury's team have reached out to Derek Chisora for a third fight. Don't nobody want to see that shit. Daniel Dubois, he is the WBA man. No, wait. Daniel Dubois has to fight the... Who does that? Doesn't Daniel Dubois have to fight the winner of Michael Hunter and Huey Fury, and then they're going to be the mandatory for Usyk? You have Joe Joyce returning in September. Too bad we can't get the Joseph Parker fight because Joseph Parker is now signed with Sky. You have uh, Felix Hergovitz, who's a, who's going to fight Jay Li Zhang to be the IBF mandatory because Luis Ortiz and. So many other people turned it down. Joe Joyce is the WBO mandatory, but he's not next, is he? WBO is next? It was the IBF first. I would guess it would be the WBO next, right? The heavyweight division's kind of top heavy. I kind of got confused. I stopped. I, I don't remember when I stopped covering it. I mean, like really keeping up with the rankings. Joe Joyce and Joseph Parker was close to happening, but then it's the network divide. Now Joe Joyce being with BT and Joseph Parker's now with Sky Sports and Boxer. Luis Ortiz, even though he's ranked number two, he turned down the opportunity to fight Hergovitz. So therefore we're getting Hergovitz versus uh, CCP J. Lee for the IBF mandatory. Dubois has to fight Michael Hunter, Huey Fury winner, whenever that's going to be rescheduled later on this year, to be the WBA mandatory. And then right now, there's currently no WBC mandatory. But don't be surprised if they order Deontay Wilder to fight Andrew Ruiz, if Andrew Ruiz beats um, Luis Ortiz, to be the WBC mandatory unless Joseph Parker and Boxer make some type of uh, push for the WBC. Or they'll fuck around and make a Chinese Communist Party. <laughs> That's not funny. Um, don't be surprised if they make Wilder versus Robert Hellenius in an eliminator. You know, I wouldn't put nothing past these, these, you know, like this boxing shit these days. <laughs> 